The signal has been given. It is time for us to move. Let's get together under my tree and move out. Let's pray. Father, as we move out on our journey this morning, may your word come alive to us, Lord. And may, Lord, we develop a closer relationship with you as we come to know you through your word, as we come to understand the wilderness experience and what you mean to teach us through it, Lord. And Lord, may we also come to understand that even in the wilderness, you take care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go. Exodus 11, verse 1 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet I will bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards, he will let you go hence. And when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. If you develop a personal relationship with the Lord, you can be sure he will tell you what he's going to do so you can be ready to move. He will give you instructions what to do, what the signal is, and favor in the sight of your enemies. They will be struggling to understand why they are even helping you. That supervisor keeping you down, his or her cronies will begin to speak on your behalf. You don't see how much crosses are for our non-Jamaicans, trouble and plagues have happened to you since you started to oppress this person. Why don't you leave them alone? Get ready to be thrust out. <laughs> The Hebrew word garash means to drive out from a possession, to expatriate, to divorce. Doesn't sound pleasant, does it? <laughs> Exodus 12, 31 to 33 says, Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night. Get out, he ordered. Leave my people and take the rest of the Israelites with you. Go and worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and herds, as you said, and be gone. I want you to notice here, he says next, Go, but bless me as you leave. All the Egyptians urged the people of Israel to get out of the land as quickly as possible, for they thought, we will all die. Remember last week we mentioned that persons who try to keep others down are in intrinsically selfish beings? Self-preservation will be the order of the day for your oppressors. It doesn't sound like good news now, but that supervisor may even cause you to be fired. Don't be dismayed. Shout a hallelujah and say God bless you. Remember, supernatural provision has been made. You will not only survive, but you will thrive. You will flourish. That person will see you later on and wonder, how come you're glowing? How come you're not suffering? This is where you give God the glory. Remember Joseph? His brothers caused him to be sold into slavery. He was thrust out of his family and familiar surroundings. God favored him and he was put in charge of Potiphar's household. But here comes Potiphar's wife asking him to come lie with her not just to lay down with her you know to lie also to make his life of virtue a lie to sin against god and her husband he was thrown into prison and again because of the favor of god he was put in charge of the prison he was then summoned to the palace because of the god-given gift of interpreting dreams he became second in charge next to pharaoh when united with his brothers and their, they feared his retaliation from his position of power, he reassured them what they meant for evil, God turned it around for good and because he was sent ahead to preserve life. Genesis 45 verse 5 says, Don't be upset and don't be angry with yourselves for selling me to this place. It was God who sent me here ahead of you to preserve your lives. Joseph experienced slavery, perhaps. It was to be a humbling lesson for him, a humbling experience. He experienced the life of a noble through his time in Potiphar's house, although a slave. He experienced prison, perhaps to nurture compassion for persons who would be in that position later on. 
But all this was in preparation for life in the palace and a major role in leadership. Through it all, there was no record of him murmuring and complaining. Let's go back to the example of the supervisor. As you are thrust out of your surroundings, trust God. You will be surprised to see food supplied, money supplied, clothes supplied, everything that you need will be supplied. Rest on Philippians 4 verse 19. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. Before you know it, the new job, the new business, the new project will be supplied. Go forth in faith. Now God heals you in preparation for the journey. So all the offenses, all the hurts, all the pains, God will heal you as he prepares you for this journey. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in you. Exodus 13 verse 18 says, But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up harnessed out of the land of Egypt. That word harness is kamush. It means able-bodied soldiers, armed men. I want you to see that God will heal you in preparation for your darak, your journey. Remember that word? That is the journey that's for a specific time and a specific purpose. The children of Israel were miserably treated as slaves, so much that their cry came up to heaven before God. The harshness of the treatment of the children of Israel is detailed in Exodus 1 verse 13 and 14, where it says they were treated ruthlessly. Their lives were made bitter with hard, in the sense of cruel, service. As a result, they languished in misery and suffering, seen in Exodus 3 verse 7, and broken spirit, seen in Exodus 6 verse 9. In other words, they were feeling the lashed. They were overworked and underfed. Yet, they left on their journey harnessed as able-bodied men, strong able-bodied men. The first camp is at Atham, on the edge of the wilderness. Atham was a place in the desert. You might wonder, as you embark on your journey, why are you in this dry place? And why would you be headed out in the wilderness? Be comforted. It is He who is leading you. He is your pillar of fire by night to light your way and to keep you warm, and your cloud by day to shade you from the harshness of the elements. Because while desert days are hot, the nights can get to below freezing. Now we rest here at Etham. Etham. And see you next week as we meet on the tree and we prepare to move again.